Hello everyone. Today we are going to be looking at vectors and we are going to first, by using this simple graph that we have on this slide, we are going to be defining the vector. Very simple. We are showing two points A and B on this graph. And what we are going to be doing is defining the vector as, say, the translation of the point going from, say, A to B. So, the vector by definition has both a size and a direction so it's a quantity that has both a size and a direction so to specify the vector we need to first of all identify its size or its magnitude and that is usually represented by the length of the line say going from a to b and the direction is shown by an arrow so the vector a to b is shown as a line going from a to b with an arrow the notation or one notation is uh, two letters with an arrow on top another notation is a lowercase letter and of course we can look at the vector as having two components an x component of five in this case and a y component of two in this case so for recap the vector is a quantity that has both a size and a direction and it is symbolized in many different ways one of which is two letters with an R on top or we can use a lowercase letter or we can use the column matrix notation 5 over 2 in this case to define the vector. Okay, here we have a graph showing two points. Coordinates of point, point A being 1 and 3 and the coordinates of point B being 6 and 5. What we're going to be using this slide to do is to get familiar with some of the terminology used in vectors. Um, for example, we're going to be making the distinction between the position vector and the displacement vector. Now, the position vector is typically used to identify the position of a particular point in space, or in this case, on the xy plane. So to identify the position of point A, we would first look at its coordinate and we, we can say that the, if we use a, def, a vector to define that position then we could say that vector would be the vector that causes the position to move from 0 to its current location at 1 and 3. So the position vector is defined as O and A and we use a column matrix notation to specify the position vector as 1 over 3. Similarly for point B, the position vector for point B would be the vector which causes the point B to be translated from the origin to its location at 6, 5. Therefore we say the position vector OB is equal to 6 over 5 as defined by the column matrix format. So that is typically how we identify the position vectors and why we use the terminology position vector. Now, if we look at the displacement of, say, point A to point B, then we can find that by subtracting the starting vector from the, end, from the ending vector. So let's say that again a little more slowly. If I want to find the displacement vector, that is a vector that causes the point to be translated from say A to B, then all I will need to do is to subtract the beginning vector from the ending vector. So end minus beginning is equal to the translation vector. So demonstrated here, the vector AB is simply ending vector, ending position vector minus beginning position vector and in this case it would be 6 over 5 minus 1 over 3 um, in using the matrix format and we would find immediately that the displacement vector from A to B is equal to 5 over 2. This is simply how that is done and um, this is the format that we'll be using to solve many of our problems going In this example we are given three points A, B and C relative to the origin. We are asked to express in the form A over B 
the position vectors and the displacement vectors. So one of the first things that you'd want to do is make a little sketch to show exactly what the points and the exercise is really asking us to do. So to visualize this particular problem, we have drawn the points on a graph. We show OA, OB, and OC. We have also shown here the displacement vectors between A and C, and the displacement vector between B and A, which is what we're asked to find. Now, recall that the position vectors are extracted immediately from the coordinate of the point. So, for example, the position vector of point A is extracted from the coordinate of point A, which is 3 over 4. So, the position vector of OA is 3 over 4, and that is simply writing it in a column matrix format. The position vector for OB is minus 1 over 6, and that too is extracted immediately from the coordinate of B. Similarly for OC, it is 5 over minus 2. Now, the next exercise is to find the displacement vector AC. And recall that I said to find a displacement vector, you merely need to identify the two position vectors, one at the end of the vector and one at the beginning of the vector and subtract them. So we are going to find or identify the position vector at C, the position vector at A, subtract those two to get the displacement vector AC. We showed that earlier. A convenient way to visualize what is happening is to rewrite the position vectors in the lowercase using the lowercase notation. So OA, for example, becomes simply lowercase a, OB equal lowercase b, and OC written as lowercase c. This is just for convenience. It is not essential that you do this. I find it simpler because, for example, I can now write the displacement vector AC as simply c minus a. And that shows me clearly that it is the ending position vector minus the beginning position vector that I'll be using to find my displacement vector AC. So I sometimes find it convenient personally to write the position vectors in the, using the lowercase format. So AC simply becomes C minus A, and that is 2 over minus 6. Simply for the displacement between B and A, that is the displacement vector, once again, it is simply A minus B, the ending position vector minus the beginning position vector. And that is equal to 2, I'm sorry, 4 over minus 2. So what the vector problems have simply um, resulted in is an exercise in subtracting matrices, column matrices. Um, so clearly some of the apparent difficulty in this subject should be removed when you view it in this way. The entire exercise is simply reduced to subtracting column matrices. And the trick then is to know exactly when to do the subtraction and what to subtract. And hopefully this would have explained some of that. So see you next time.